This is the brand new ASUS ZenBook S13 OLED. I'm not gonna say thin credible, that was in ASUS's marketing materials, I'm not saying it, but it is pretty thin and light. Now, last year's ZenBook S13 OLED was really popular. Loads of you guys watched that video. And this is, well, it's a bit different. They've prioritized portability and sustainability over performance. The laptop's eco credentials are clearly a big priority for ASUS, and it's the most environmentally friendly ZenBook they've ever made. From the packaging to the materials, this incredible ceramic plasma lid, which has this really nice kind of like papery stone texture, and I love this design. Really, really cool, and also it looks bloody good as well. The two most important things for an Ultrabook, thinness and lightness. I'm not sure they're words, but this checks both those boxes. We're talking just one kilogram uh, on the scales, which for my American friends is 2.2 pounds, and also when closed, it's just 10.9 millimeters thick, which is significantly slimmer considering last year's model was 14.9 millimeters. It's around 30% thinner. And somehow they've also squeezed in a USB 3.2 Type-A audio combo jack. And on the other side, we've got two Thunderbolt 4s and an HDMI 2.1. This actually comes in two different colors. This is actually the basalt gray model, but it does also come in a very curious Ponder Blue version. Hmm. In terms of the specs, we have a 13-inch 2.8K OLED display. It is only 60 hertz, which is one of my main criticisms of the laptop, which is a bit of a shame, but otherwise it is an absolutely gorgeous display HDR 500 True Black certified Dolby Vision Pantone validated 16 by 10 display with some really nice thin bezels. They call it their Nano Edge display. On the inside, uh, we've actually gone from AMD last year back to Intel. We have 13th gen U series chips in here. This is the i7 1355U, I believe. There's also an i5 variant, but unlike regular 15 watt versions of this chip, ASUS have actually been able to reduce some of the uh, component size in size, so they've improved the thermal efficiency, and so they've actually been able to boost that CPU uh, wattage from 15 up to 20 watts. And they've doubled the RAM to 32 gigs, it's also faster, and we also get up to a one terabyte PCIe 4 SSD, which you can upgrade yourself. But, and there is a big but here, because on the whole, performance is actually a step down versus last year, which is something we don't see very often. This new 13th gen Intel chip does outperform last year's Ryzen 7 in single core performance, but in multi-core and graphics, it falls behind. Perhaps if they've been able to squeeze in a P-series chip like we get in the new and similarly light and super thin LG Grams, uh, or indeed if Intel's integrated XE chips were just a little bit more powerful, then this would have fared better. But with the new ZenBook 13 S OLED we have here, ASUS is kind of traded performance for portability. I mean, this is a good quarter thinner than last year's model, so it may not be the fastest laptop in the world, but it's still plenty quick enough for everyday tasks like Chrome, Office, Netflix, photo, and a bit of light video editing, even a spot of casual gaming. Plus, you do always have the option of streaming games via GeForce Now or Xbox Cloud, and it does support the latest Wi-Fi 6E. Also bear in mind that at this price point, this goes directly up against the likes of the MacBook Air with the M2, which on the whole is more powerful and also being fanless means it's completely silent. But with this under more moderate or even intense workloads, the fans do wear up. It's quite a high pitch fan noise, uh, which can get a bit distracting. To combat the fan noise, you can jump into the MyASUS app and set it to the Whisper profile, which caps the CPU to 12 watts versus 15 in standard and up to 35 in performance mode. Now with this 2.8K resolution, which is 2880 by 1800, so it's like Quad HD+, plus, it's really, really sharp. We're talking 255 pixels per inch, which is noticeably sharper than say the MacBook Air with its 225 PPI. Although if you do uh, have this uh, native 100% scaling, everything is absolutely tiny on the Windows 11 desktop, so most of the time I've been running this at 200% scaling. This screen is absolutely gorgeous and also impressively color accurate, which puts it pretty close to pro level accuracy, which is ideal for your color editing. You can also switch between different color profiles, and altogether this is one of the best quality OLED screens you can get, although it's still not really that much different from last year's model. But still, with the 550 nits of brightness, the Display HDR 500 True Black, and also the fantastic looking Dolby Vision, it's nearly perfect. 90 or 120 hertz, which is becoming more standard these days, and maybe a touchscreen would have been the icing on the cake. Battery life is still excellent though, and a decent step up actually over last year. Three hours of YouTube at 50% brightness used 25% of the battery, so we're looking at about 12 to 13 hours of video streaming, and I'd say about 11 hours of general everyday use. So this will easily get you through a day and a half at the office, but as always, it all depends on how you use it. 
The Zenbook does also come bundled with this 65 watt fast charger and a half hour top up will get you just shy of 50%. I really do appreciate how much effort ASUS has gone to making this a more sustainable and eco-friendly laptop. It's not something I get to talk about very often with laptops or any tech product really, and it is important, so it's great they've gone the extra mile with this. The packaging is FFC Mix certified, which means it's from responsibly managed forests and also 100% recyclable or compostable. The magnesium aluminium alloy for the keyboard cover, the chassis and the lid is all made from recycled materials. Even this fancy ceramic aluminium design for the lid is created using just water, so it's a more eco-friendly manufacturing process, and this stone-like texture it leaves is actually unique to each model. But it's not just a pretty face, because this is actually a more durable design as well, with increased wear resistance, corrosion protection, and together with the increased energy efficiency, it actually gives this ZenBook a longer lifespan, which of course is equally important to reducing its carbon footprint. The Ergo Lift Hinge makes a return, so as you open it up, you can see it lifts up the keyboard a little bit, so we've got more uh, room underneath for better air circulation, and also it raises the typing position, which I do think is a little bit more comfortable. Uh, and again, like last year, you can uh, push this all the way back to 180 degrees, it will lie flat, which gives you a little bit more flexibility if you're using this on your lap or perhaps on a laptop stand. Oh, hey. This is actually being recorded on the webcam. It's a big upgrade over last year's 720p resolution. It's now 1080p, uh, and also they have some nice software improvements like 3D noise reductions. And it's even more impressive that they've squeezed this webcam system into a lid that's actually 30% thinner than last year. Isn't that cool, Pete? Really cool. There you have it. Okay, let's wrap up. Putting last year's model to one side, this is still a terrific thin and light laptop. Solid performance, especially single core, a lovely color accurate screen, although a high refresh would have been nice, good range of ports, a much improved battery life, and the headline for this year really is a much more sustainable design. Is it better than last year's model? Well, no, but it's kind of like a different proposition. They should have just called it the ZenBook S Eco, or maybe dropped the S from the naming or something, because it's just a bit of a different kind of laptop. You won't be disappointed if you picked one of these up, I just had hoped for a little bit more. So if you do fancy checking this out, I will leave a link in the description below. And if you've got any questions at all, let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you did enjoy this video, a like and subscribe would be very much appreciated. And I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Chat.